call the meeting to order and do you have the accessibility statement? Yep. Oh, oh you have it on your because it's not in the thing you sent me. Oh, sorry. I think that's just the agenda. <laughs> sorry. This meeting is accessible to people with disabilities. Microphones or telephones will be used by all speakers. Large print material are available upon request. This is nice large print material. Thank you. Uh, if you would like either of these accommodations, please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833. The Notice of Non-Discrimination Rights and Protections to Beneficiaries with Regard to Federal, federal Title VI and Non-Discrimination Protections and Statements of Non-Discrimination Protection is posted in this meeting room and is available at the Old Colony Planning Council's website. Please contact Mary Alt Mal Al Waldron at 508-583-1833 for more information. Thank you. So back to the agenda. So we want to wait for a quorum, right? Or do we say- I'm looking right we... now in the bylaws okay. to see, um, and it might've also been when I was doing research on Robert's rules that it might say, so. Uh, typically you need- Half. If you have six, you need the three. That's assuming that we have a stated number of members on it. We do. Well, I guess not in the bylaws as to how many members, but in our like record of who is on the. Yeah, I mean, community. so in some ways, if we don't have a stated number of official members, maybe it is two. Um, let me just do this. Um, uh, let me just. Text Christian, she did not respond back to me, but I'm going to read forward the. So she has. She may or may not. Let's see. And typically, when Christine does accept, um, she's usually spot on. So let's um, perhaps maybe if I can recommend, um, Lee, that maybe we just move um, not to take action, but review the potential amendments. Sure. And that way we can at least have it be reviewed. And then when we get the quorum, if we get the quorum to take action. Thanks, Megan. Nope, that's something. Sorry. All right. Oh, no this is... I'm trying to get that. Okay. So Christine just replied, hi, Mary. No, no, she's not able to. She's babysitting, trying to get the baby down. So we're not going to have a quorum. Um, so we could be even just providing them. This whatever we do has to be endorsed by the full council. So even correct. if it's just the two of us, I think yes. uh, acting as the two, we can just provide the recommendation. That is correct. Um. So these are the um, Megan. Just what do you have up here now? These are this is this is just the opening page. So this is the ones with the edit. Um. Basically, just adding in from January's meeting the. Um, the OPEB trust saying like how we would nominate the committee and we said as, excuse me, sorry. The one that has um, this one, shall appoint OPEB trust committee as dictated in declaration of trust. Um, but I think the basic things that we were planning on discussing today was the, whether or not we wanted clerk or secretary so if just for standby for one second so that m was added back in a of whatever january it was, 20, january this past january correct commonly accommodate the new output trust so thank you okay so to your very point you know there's often there's always been a couple of things during the meeting about what one needs to do and one of them is sometimes referring to the secretary as the clerk and the clerk as secretary, and they've been used interchangeably. Um, but in our bylaws, it does say secretary, if I remember right. Um, and I believe I may have brought this up before that, yeah, there it is, a, a president, a secretary and treasurer, um, that duty. So basically the secretary as a board member you know, it's Megan who does the minutes, you know, I do the roll call. So it's more um, a, a position. So I didn't know if there was a, at least I wanted to bring it up because it's come up interchangeably and to see if whether the by bylaws needed to be changed or not. 
I, I would think we change it completely because the secretary was back in the day before we had any kind of professional staff. I would say it should be a, chair, a president and vice president. I mean, the, uh -huh. the real need for that second person if the president yeah. is not available. Yeah. So I think it should be just, just hold it all the same, but say president, vice president, and treasurer. And then that way we have a very clear line of succession if the president is not available. That's actually a really good point. Frank? That's correct. <laughs> Frank, do you feel one way or the other? Uh, I agree with Lee. I, I think that uh, you need to have somebody on deck uh, when we begin, and it should be president, vice president, and the treasurer. I agree with uh, Lee altogether on this. Right. So, I, you know, one of the things that Charlie and I were chatting about in the original um, um, enabling legislation, it does refer to it as being secretary, but these are the bylaws that are the acting and in, in, in documents. So I think that we'd be fine because these have been changed a number of times. Um, so if I, we will go through and um, and obviously we don't have a, a quorum to make action about this, but to recommend replacing the, the, the title of secretary with vice um, president. And if somebody really wanted to split hairs, we could always put note that the term secretary and vice president are interchangeable, but I, we don't need to do that. Right. <clears throat> you may, I know in many of the documents for grants, it asks for the, you know, it, it's not as often, but early on when I was here, they were asking for a lot of the, you know, the, the clerk slash secretary of the organization to sign off to say that I'm like an authorized signature. Um, so I think the footnote to say, you know, vice president and, you know, to I think we could put it here. Yeah. And just say they act as like the secretary. Yeah, that's a good idea. Man. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's that was one of the ideas. And we'll and we'll do go through everything and and um, um, replace. Um, and the other item, I, it was something that you and I chatted about, Lee, is that you know a couple of the meetings where they were a little bit of like when one takes action, and um, we're we're really kind of clarifying within the meetings what goes into the consent agenda, um, and then if something gets taken out, and then I think it was happened to be when the nominated committee was taking the recommendation to the full council. But that recommendation was to make an appointment. And so the council was accepting the nominating committee's report. And then someone says, well, no, you've got to take one more action to actually have that person be. And so it was a little wonky. And we said, because of Robert rules of order. And so we always been under saying, I've never really seen anything. And then recently looking at this article nine and at the bottom, it says, Robert rules of orders revised edition shall be followed by the council. But and again, I think I feel pretty strongly there. We just want to say something to the effect that the council shall follow general parliamentary rules because Robin uh, rules is such a rabbit hole. And I think if we just said generally accepted parliamentary procedures. Frank. Yes, uh, I um, I think of what we're trying to do here is is clear up all of the. Um, gray areas and i think by doing what we're doing we're doing that and it's important that you have and especially when you follow robert's rules uh you you know I, as a town moderator for 30 something years i used to always say parliamentary procedure is the way that you normally do things it doesn't mean you don't oversee uh, other rules, but if we normally do this, we should continue to do it. Do you want to keep it as we follow Robert's rules as a as a group? Well, I, uh, you know, there is no budgetary system in Robert's rules, right. but it should be part of our standard and i mean i don't i i just want to clear up a lot of great things but i i think mr chairman whatever way you feel 
Yeah, I just know that I've run into issues with Robert's rules because there are all kinds of exceptions, notes, and right. And all you need is to have one person show up who decides they're going to just dominate the meeting by using Robert rules. Right. Which is why I generally like to just say we're going to follow general parliamentary procedures. And right. And in parliamentary procedure by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, again, yep. goes back to the fact how you used to do it or the way you do it is parliamentary procedure. Yeah. So, so, Mr. Chair, if I could recommend this, because as you know, we just, this is the first year we had a, um, a council retreat and we will be holding them on a yearly basis that we, as part of that session, we go over parliamentary procedures as a general rule of thumb yep. and not necessarily take a council meeting to do it, but that it be done in a, in a session where it's discussed to know about some of the decorum, right? And I think some of that could also be upon myself to just take up a, um, some little bit more training as well, just to make sure that um, some of those those rules are in place. But um, that would be my opinion. Okay, so I think the consensus from the two of us is to just change this to general par parliamentary procedures. Right. And I believe that is, um, those were the only two issues that we really had. There was Charlie, something else you and I talked about, wasn't there? I'm pretty sure. We talked about the OPED. That was because of the, that was changed early on. Robert's rules, and then we changed the fact that I'm um, have signature capabilities with another council member if I, if needed. Um, and it was really the clerk secretary, and I think the idea of a vice chair. Oh, that was different. Charlie, do you remember if there was anything else? Yeah, I don't remember anything else. Can you keep going through? Is at the end. Standing committees. I'm going backwards, just you as a heads up, I, just so I, I don't. No, no, no. Actually, Lee is right. By by just you, Megan. Um, you had the treasurer, um, the audit committee versus finance committee. That was the other topic that John Costa had brought up. Um, and before I came on, I don't remember that there was a finance committee because it was the council, um, usually that had. Um, and maybe, I don't know if that's it or not, Lee, but. No, that's not it, but that's fine. If we think we should call it just the audit committee, that's fine. Is that what you're recommending? Um, I was recommending keeping it as is. Oh, but okay. The John Costas point is, was that typically, I mean, we're just having a hard time get people getting to meetings. And that was my kind of my point yeah. is getting a quorum. So if we form another committee, so like usually, not usually all the time, any of the audit information does get funneled through the, yeah. through the finance. Okay, so itself. keeping it as is. I got to remember. Yeah, I wish I could remember. I should, should have wrote down because there was some other thing we talked about. I think with the, oh, so go ahead, Lee. Sorry, no, I didn't mean go, to interrupt you. No, no, go. I was just saying with the finance audit, one of the things we talked about to um, John's point was saying that the finance audit, like we could have them where they essentially meet together, but then if there is a need that we feel like there needs to be an audit, whoever is on the audit committee would then meet separately. Yeah, I'm with Mary. We have enough committees. We don't need to be creating yet Sounds another good to me. Yeah. <laughs> that you guys have to track. It's it's a valid point. He, his point, I, I understood completely. I just, we again, let's see what that is. Megan, maybe... Um, I, don't know if Do we have anything? I think one of the other things we discussed before was making it clear the when alternates get the vote. Oh, I think that was the other yeah. thing we talked yeah, about yeah, because yeah. we do have one member who's constantly voting as an alternate, even though the delegate is there. And it's mm -hmm. again, maybe it's a sensitive matter that the chairman has to kind of bring up. But I, I think that might have been the other thing we talked I, about. I, but let's take a look at the language, I think. And it might already be there. And we just have never pushed it because you don't want to embarrass the person in front of everybody else. So that particular alternate, um, I have talked to the delegate and we're supposed to try to grab breakfast together so we can know that the voice. Yeah, there are vacancies. So. Um, Thank you, Lee. That was one of the topics, but I think we were going to try to deal with it internally. We haven't had the breakfast yet. Um, but yeah, I just think it makes sure that this re reflects that the alternate only votes in the absence yes. of the yeah. uh, delegate. Yeah. And do we yeah. see that anywhere? Well, you know, uh, Lee, you're absolutely correct, because if you'll notice when I'm there, 
John Costa, if he's got something to write down, and it's usually a very valid point. Yeah, there you go. It's there. He doesn't when we're off the air. Yeah, well, I, I think it's okay. I think it's okay for an alternate to speak at any point if they're there uh, and, part yeah. and participate. I just it's just that they shouldn't be voting. Um, if you have a del you get one vote per town. And if nice. you have an alternate and a delegate, they can certainly participate in the conversation, but it's just one vote. Yeah. But I didn't mean to uh interrupt you, Liam. What I nope. was what I was trying to say is John knows his place. He speaks up when he can. Yep. And he usually has a very valid point. But I think I know what you're talking about. And I think it's very important that when your delegate votes, you do not have a vote. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, but it's a, it's in there. So it's more of an administrative issue. It's the it's the uh, president's problem. Co correct. And and at this point, we we haven't it hasn't been raised to the president yet. Um, but I think the um, the particular um, alternate is one who has is is has votes at different boards, and I think it just sort of feels comfortable for him. So yeah. so we will deal with that. And I think everybody in the in the end understands that it's the delegate that votes and we only count the one vote. So, but we'll try to get that cleared up. I and I, that I do think that's the end of our, of our bylaw. Otherwise right. the next meeting of bylaw will be a year um, back at the beginning of 2025. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do we need to vote anything? Not, I know right now with the quorum, but for the annual meeting, is there anything that we need to have? I don't think we technically had the council adopt the change we made in January. Okay. okay, so we do need to have, what I would recommend is this, is that um, I think we, we can still have on the agenda for the council is a report, a report out of the committee yes. um, that we will have something prepared for you, Lee, and we'll include the OPEB trust committee in that as well. Note that we didn't have a quorum, but we are putting it before the council for their approval. I just read this too, Mary, speaking of the quorum, I I don't know if it's, it's a regularly scheduled meeting of the council, which I know is a subcommittee, but it does say that we can hold a meeting yep. of exec with two members of the executive committee and Lee and Frank are both executive committee. So I don't know if that counts for the subcommittee. It does, It's not clear, but we probably should. Well, uh, I think Megan brings up a good point. Uh, it does say two members of the executive committee. So that takes precedent over the quorum. I that's my way of reading it. And I, I but I, while we're I, while we're on this, it may make some sense to say that this can be applicable to subcommittees as well, because it's not very clear. So right. perhaps we can make okay. that a, to add. Thank you, Megan, for, for catching mm -hmm. that. At, Although I did the last sentence, though, it says in these instances, the total number of members president voting must not be less than five. Mm -hmm. that, that contradicts the one at the e, top. Well, I think, so, all right, so hold on. In the absence of a quorum and a regularly scheduled meeting of the council, the council president may hold a meeting of the executive committee of the council, provided two members of the executive oh. committee are present to conduct the necessary business of the council with those yeah, members that. of the present and such other members of the council who are also present. Yeah, yeah. So that doesn't apply at all. Nope. Never yeah. mind. We're Almost. back to where we started. Yeah. But it still brings up, and maybe not for this time around, I think maybe in the notes what I would um say it, for you, Lee, is that the the quorum is an important piece, even at the subcommittee meetings. You know, we try, and I say we, I know it's been really Megan, really try to we first start with a chair and when they're available, and then we have in multiple dates and times, and then people, and again, life happens, right? So, um, you know, it, um, you know, I know Preston can't usually make a meeting during the day. It's usually at nighttime. And so perhaps we take a look at, sorry, I have the list here. Um, bylaw committee is Lee, Becky, Christine, Stephen, Frank, and Preston. So, you know, perhaps maybe we look, I mean, this is a once a year, but maybe perhaps we look at yep. just membership. And I'll yep. talk to um to Becky about that. Okay. All right. So you have the consensus of the two of us. We're good to move. I do. All right.
Thank you very much, gentlemen. Frank, I'm sorry to be mean to you. I love you anyway. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> Boy, that did not sound very sincere. Oh. <laughs> I'll have to uh, I'll have to send some pictures of my my uh, my grandson. Yeah, uh, what did they name him? They named him Nico N I C O Andrew. Hmm. So Andrew's my husband's middle name. Yeah. Um, and Nico was just a name that she liked from I don't know twenty years ago or something. But uh, uh, they're all doing great. Uh, well, nine pounds twenty three inches long. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> I'm not even five feet tall, and I have no idea where that height came from. But anyway, yeah, um, I guess say almost taller than you are already. <laughs> he rolled over. He's one week old, and he turned over. Turned over already. Wow. I'm telling my daughter and my son-in-law, you guys better keep an eye on this one. So, anyway, gentlemen, thank you for your both okay. of your time, and um, right. we'll get things set up for you. Leave for ready, prepare for the meeting on um, for council meeting. So, okay, all right, thank you, thank you, bye. -bye.